Hello everyone. It's been exciting in the world of sports throughout the weekend. It was it was beautiful matches. Beautiful matches were being played in the Barclays Premier League, in the La Liga, in the Bundesliga, and even on the continent of Africa. My name is Feike Mibangushi. We'll be talking football and some other things that have happened in football. And I, to do that today, I have with me Kazim Elibete, the editor of iSoccer, that is International Soccer, one of the uh, publications of Complete uh, Sports, that is Compl Communications Limited. Kazim, you are welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Hi, viewers. I also have with me Baba, we call him Baba, but his name is Sulaiman Alao, and he is the staff writer of Complete Sports Saturday. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, viewers. So many goals were scored in the Barclays Premier League. We know that a lot of things have been happening in the Barclays Premier League. Comparing uh, what happened last season, Kazim, is there a shift? You look at um, last season, you find the likes of Liverpool, Arsenal at the sixth or seventh position, ninth position. But now you, you, you look at Arsenal, you look at Liverpool, you look at Tottenham, that will even be struggling in the tenth position. And you're now leaving Man U and Man City behind. Is there a power shift now or is it just a flash in the pan? Um, honestly, I want to believe that it's a power shift, although it's too early in the days to, to say because... Uh, uh, we've just played six matches. We still have a whole of 32 games to go in the season. But when you look at the way the clubs normally start, yes, uh, two, three, four seasons ago, you wouldn't fancy Liverpool in the top three. I mean, in the top four, not even talking about being in second position. Mm -hmm. Arsenal are leading. Yes, they normally start well sometimes, and they've never failed to finish in the top four in Wenger's uh, time. But Tottenham, Liverpool, they are a big surprise. Bigger surprises are Man Manchester United. Yes, they could start slow. Sometimes they do start slow. But after six matches, mm -hmm. just seven points, Manchester United on 12th, 12th position, even not even mid-table. Uh, that says a lot. Okay? And uh, you say, yes, it's just six games. But the six games are good pointers because when you look at the way teams have played, I mean, West Brom beating Man U at Old Trafford, um, they've lost three games out of six. Mm -hmm. And when you win the league, the, 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 you, you can't, nobody has lost more than five matches and go, go, go ahead to win the league. So they've lost three already out of, out of six. Out of 32, are you saying they're not going to lose more than two? Well, but I, 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 would you say that the, um, the, the manager is, has a lot to do with their failure? Um, well, you can't say failure. Yeah, they've had a very, very bad start. Okay, and I agree, it is, I mean, we're talking about uh, somebody who spent 26, 27 years, very successful years, talking about Alex Ferguson, mm -hmm. anybody will struggle to replace that man, not least uh, David Moyes, who never won anything meaningful before he, 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 he became a Man, man United manager. I keep telling people, the last six titles that Man U won, Ferguson <laughs> only won four of them. You, in fact, you had a motivator. You had not just a manager, you had somebody who will make you play, deliver 150%. Okay? Moyes has not risen to that level. And that's, that's, that's telling on, uh, on the team on, performance on the team. generally. You, you, you look at Pellegrini too at Man City. I keep telling people, Man City in England has the strongest squad. Okay? So on a good day, Man City should be sitting where Arsenal are today. All right, all right. Man U, Man City, they are still sitting, but Gunners, they are really going up. Um, what do you have to say regarding uh, Mesut Ozil, his input in the team? Would you say Wenger has really done well by getting this guy? I think uh, what uh, Arsenal had, uh, what we are going for us is uh, continuity. Unlike uh, the previous season that we had, we had to sell our best players to Man U. We've sold, we've sold uh, to uh, uh, RVP, uh, Van Persie, we sold uh, Fabregas the other time. So we had consistency going for us now. And the fact that other top teams, most of them, they have changed their coaches. So we have that consistency. I think the coming of Ozil is just an icing on the cake for us now. Okay. And if you are going to have a very good season, you will have certain players that will up their game and that's I think that's what has happened to Ramsey now and that's why it's exploding and of course we can see where Arsenal is on the top of but, the but, but you think, do you think this can be sustained looking at the fact that you know at the point if there is no bench and there's injury 
definitely this will affect performance mid-season or later on in the season? Of course, we have had uh, seasons whereby I think Asuna is about 15 points ahead and they still lost the title. So you have to pray that uh, you don't have so many injuries. But when you talk of consistency, it has to do with the players you have, if they are fit or they are not fit. But now we have about five or six regular players that are still not very fit. But this team is going strong and that says a lot that what Wenger has been doing over the years to bring in the crop of young players that are coming up and now, they, they are maturing. So I think, give and take, I think Arsenal will not have to struggle much with uh, well, consistency as regard the uh, Premier League this season. All right, um, going away to the Champions League, um, it's been goals galore. The, two weeks ago, some matches were played. That match they won, and 53 goals were scored. Um, Kazim, what does that say to you? What does it mean to you? Goals, you, you, you saw a lot of um, EPL clubs scoring and winning matches right it, it, has it has it been like that before and no really it was a surprise and a pleasant one i have to say because um yes group stage teams do come out and play it is when you get to the knockout stages that the goals tend to dry up but even for an opening day i think that was massive 53 goals from um 16 matches that's more than three goals per match which is high by any standard um long may it continue and uh, I think, I, I believe this season, the English clubs look up for it. I don't know whether any one of them will go on and win the title, talking about the Champions League, but I think they've started so well. And uh, apart from Arsenal, who are in a very, very top group, unlike mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. Arsenal have been the luckiest of the English uh, contingents in the Champions League, always having a very easy group. But this time, but around, this time around, the, Group D the group is, is Group of Death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and um, but they started well by winning away to Marseille, so, which is very very good for their morale. But looking mm -hmm. at the match against Borussia Dortmund tomorrow, no, they're playing not Napoli. Tomorrow. Napoli. Uh, Napoli tomorrow. Yeah, then Borussia game. Dortmund will be meeting Marseille. Marseille, yes. What 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 um, do should we expect? You see, interestingly, Arsenal top the league in England currently, and uh, Napoli. Are second mm -hmm. in Italy, mm -hmm. so it's like <laughs> if the two of them are the same league, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a top table, it's a big derby, mm -hmm. so, so to speak. And um, Benitez is the coach of Napoli. He knows everything you need to know about Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Having spent some fruitful years in England and uh, in uh, uh, Peperena, that's Napoli goalkeeper. They have a goalkeeper who spent like eight seasons in England. So yes, Napoli are going. Uh, they are they waiting, but they have some familiar foes who Arsenal have to be wary of. I, I, I see that's a very, very big game because the, the battle of who's going to come second looks to be between Napoli and Arsenal. If you look at Dortmund, forget about what happened in the first day when they mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. the record and they lost to Napoli 2-1. And I think that's a big plus for Napoli because when you beat the top team in the group, it gives you extra three points, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So this is the battle between who is likely going to follow Dortmund into the next round. All right. Um, which match will you be looking at um, tomorrow? Of course, I'll be looking for Arsenal versus uh, Napoli, like he has said. And I think a lot of things go into that game because now that Arsenal had, they had a very good start when they won their first match. And I think uh, with the coming of uh, Benitez, uh, he wants to prove certain things that he's uh, getting out of England. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have to do that. The fact that he's not a good coach. But I think, like I've said earlier, because Arsenal will be playing at home, I think the pressure will be a little bit reduced. And I think uh, with the flow of the game, the game might be won from the bench. Okay. But I'm tipping Arsenal at least to carry the game. All right. Looking at it finally, Lionel Messi's injury now, will it in any way affect um, the team's performance? Of course, I think the Barcelona team is uh, built on Messi and he's the world uh, best player. And there's no way a player like that having injury, there's no way it's, it's not going to affect the team. But I think there's a, they can still back on uh, this Brazilian boy. And that's, uh, we're talking of uh, the new signing, Neymar, to, to still come up with some magic to help uh, Barcelona in uh, Messi's absence. All right. Um, in addition to that, any team in the world will miss the quality of Lionel Messi. Okay, and um, that's one of the things that did them in last season. Um, when they met Bayern Munich in the semi-finals of the Champions League, they were beating Oman away. I remember very well how Messi single-handedly overcome, uh, overcame AC Milan 
Because, but for Messi, Milan would have eliminated Barcelona. But when they didn't have him in, uh, 100% fit in the first leg against Bayern in the semi final, they lost woefully. And he wasn't even available for the second leg. They lost woefully. So Barcelona missed Messi badly, like any team in the world would. But I don't think the effect will be that much this time around because today's Barcelona have a substantive coach and experienced manager, a manager who has won things before taking up the club. I mean, we all respect. Do you, do you see Barcelona winning against Celtic tomorrow? They have big history. And, I mean, last season, Barcelona went to Celtic and they were beating 2 1. Even when Celtic, the first day when Celtic came to Camp Nou, it was a tug of war. Barcelona struggled to beat Celtic 2 1. So that history is there. Celtic are not as strong as they were last season. They've lost Wanyama, they've lost this top scorer, Gary Hooper. Okay, so uh, I don't expect them to give Barcelona much trouble like they did last season. Plus, like I said, the coach now, that mm -hmm. is Tito, uh, I mean, um, Tata. Is that Tata. Okay. Tata. Uh, you can't compare him to Villanova. Villanova, with all due respect, was uh, assistant to Guardiola. He got the Barca job when Guardiola left. And, and he, was and he, had, he had health issues too. Okay. So Barcelona had a couple of problems last season, which I don't think they have now. Excluding Messi's injury, I think that team is very, very early, which explains why they are still top of the league. All right, uh, lastly, chance. lastly, let's let's look at the two league, La, La Liga and um, the EPL. If you if you look at it, the EPL seems to be more interesting. Do you do you, do you think it's more interesting in the EPL where you, you can't even predict who the winner of um, the Barclays Premier League will be in a particular season, even up to the last points, like when Manchester City won last season, um, two seasons ago, yes, and Manchester yes. United won last season. You know, you can't really predict. But if you look at La Liga, it is Barcelona followed by Real Madrid. Fine, Athletic uh, Madrid is coming up and uh, might probably be winning in this season. So which one looks more interesting to you? Of course, the EPL is more interesting and like you have said, I think the EPL is more of suspense and, and in Spain you have uh, Galacticos and when you talk of Galacticos you just you are talking of showmanship and that's where you have the biggest stars you have Ronaldo you have Messi you have Neymar it is just about I mean the top players vying against them but in the in the Premier League you have it's a tradition of other teams trying to come up and trying to take on on the, the so-called uh, power bases and that's what's happening so there's a lot of power shift now in the EPL and that's what makes it more interesting. All right, that's all we can take on Complete Football today. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for coming on today's show. And um, before we go, um, if you on Tuesdays and Fridays, you can pick a copy of iSoccer, that is international soccer, from your vendor at an affordable price. And, of course, daily, your day, your day is not complete without complete sports. So you can get that, that Mondays all through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at an affordable price. That's all I can take today. It's bye from me and the gentlemen. Thank right. you.